Jennings with Century 21 803 Realty. Last week, we spoke with expert lender Morel Johnson to go over all the lending questions that first time home buyers have. And today, I am here with Chad Dial with Dial, Grimm, and Rupert to go over the closing process and everything to expect on closing days. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in the closing process? Absolutely. Yes, ma'am. So my name's Chad Dial. I went to Carolina Law School and graduated, been an attorney since 2013. We started the firm back in 2020, right before COVID hit. So that was a lot of fun dealing with that at the very beginning there. With myself and um, one paralegal, we now have a total of 43 staff. Um, including 10 attorneys and four offices throughout the Midlands to help folks. So buying a house could be a really stressful situation for anybody and to Absolutely. come to an attorney's office, it just seems very intimidating. Of course. Yeah. What, what kind of ways do you feel like? Absolutely. You know, I, I, I see it all the time because I, I, I understand and I respect that I am probably the first attorney that most people have to talk to mm -hmm. and especially coming in the office. Um, so we want to do anything that we possibly can to make folks comfortable. We will be reaching out throughout the process to make sure that everyone understands the expectations leading up to it, um, dealing with uh, the transfer of funds, all those things to make that happen as smoothly as possible. And then by the time someone gets here, most everything should have already been handled for them as it is. So what we do is we come in and we're going to try and just sit with folks and make sure that they have a full understanding. That is their opportunity to ask any and all questions that they may possibly have. And that's all that we want to do is we want folks to come in and by the time that they leave, they feel like they've gotten all their questions answered. They're leaving with a smile on their face. Hopefully we can even laugh a little bit along the way too, because it, it can be a little, it can be a little dull sometimes dealing yeah. with finances and numbers. And if you can't have fun with it a little sometimes along the way, then what are we really doing in my opinion? Normally it takes about 45 minutes on a purchase transaction. I know some folks walk in and are concerned, oh, I'm going to be here for three or four hours. And typically that's not the case. Right. It, it, it can be fairly in and out and um, we, we will tailor it to exactly what the client needs. Awesome. I love it. And I love the environment too here at this firm. It's very welcoming and you have snacks at the table. Tiffany at the desk is so friendly and welcoming. So what should buyers and sellers expect the day they come to the closing table? Sure. So everybody's always nervous when it comes to closing, especially the first time. But once you've gotten to the closing table, the closing table should honestly be the easiest part of the entire transaction. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through all the documents that the lender has, make sure that we're, we've discussed taxes and a bunch of other things that are going on with the transaction. But really at that point, it's come down to essentially a review. By that point, they've had the opportunity to handle the inspections, talk with their, rent, uh, talk with their lender, make sure that their financing is in, in line with what their expectations were. Um, we've gone through due diligence to make sure that everything is proper with, throughout the uh, transaction and with the property. And so at this point, we're really sitting down, going over the, everything, making sure that everybody's on the same page there. Awesome. Well, we know that attorney fees are part of our closing costs. Yes, ma'am. What, what's all included in that? When we're, when we're paying our attorney fees, what are we getting? I think that includes things like the attorney's fee and the, the time for me and my staff to work on everything. Um, also included within closing costs are going to be the title search, where we pay an abstractor to check on the title and have that reviewed and all those things. Making sure the taxes are getting paid, the county has to be paid for um, recording the documents at the Register of Deeds office, um, transfer of taxes, um, appraisals, any other kind of lender fees, anything that goes in and along with the transaction. And then from a seller's perspective, it also includes any payoffs. So making sure that the, um, the outstanding mortgages are getting paid. Um, or if there's any out due outstanding rent or anything along those lines can also come into play there. A lot of people that live in other states and a vast majority of the states, you can go to a closing table with a title company. Correct. Tell me about South Carolina and how title company Absolutely. comes in. But in South Carolina, state law requires that an attorney close a transaction. Mm -hmm. What that does is basically gives buyers and sellers a higher level of protection than just a title company. A title company can come in and it is their job just to look at the title and move on. Since I have a law degree and am licensed with the bar, I am held to a higher ethical standard. We have to make sure that everything is handled properly and people are well, very well taken care of. And if not, I can suffer the consequences essentially of that. 
So buyers and sellers can rest assured that they have someone who is an advocate for them to look after their best interest. Title companies, they have a vested interest financially to make sure that a transaction happens. And in some cases, it can even be a situation where the worse deal that a buyer gets, the more money that they can sometimes make. That's not the case here. I'm here to make sure that a buyer is getting what they're, that what they're supposed to and that the seller is having everything happen properly. To me, if a transaction doesn't go through because something's going on, that doesn't affect anything on this side. I'm only here to make sure that they're getting what they're supposed to. So it sounds like it would be really beneficial even if you don't live in a state where it's required to have a real estate attorney. It absolutely can yeah. be, yes, absolutely. Especially if there's any in indications at all that there's potentially an issue going on with the problem. Yeah. You want to talk to me about different types of closing, um, specifically people that are moving out of state and how that works when sure. we're working remotely. Yes, ma'am. And, and, you know, obviously, especially since COVID, that has been such a common theme that we see. We deal with folks both on the buyer and seller side that aren't here locally. And quite frankly, it's not a big deal. We are able to use technology to be our friend in these situations. Now, we're still limited by what South Carolina law says we have to do. Biggest thing there is a lot of other states you'll hear they have their remote online notaries. Mm -hmm. South Carolina doesn't allow those yet. So you still have to sit down with a notary. But what we'll do is whether you're on the buyer or seller side, we can go through the process, send all the documents to wherever they are. They can go to bank, post office, shoot, grocery stores even have notaries nowadays to be able to go through the documents. We'll be able to get on the phone and we'll walk through just like there's somebody that's sitting here in our office. We can either get on the phone and do it that way, we can get on a Zoom call and do it that way as well and go through all of the documents just like somebody was sitting here at the table. Thankfully on the seller side, there's significantly fewer documents that they have to sign, probably about eight or 10, normally it takes about 10 or 15 minutes. Um, if you've got a buyer that is paying cash for a property and they're out of state, they don't even have to sit with a notary because there's nothing that has to be notarized. Mm -hmm. That's something that we can actually send out essentially via DocuSign for electronic signature. And again, we'll jump on the phone or jump on a Zoom, go through the, all the documents, make sure all the questions are answered and all that stuff, and be able to have them on another day. You hear a lot of wire fraud. You want to go over what that means? Yeah, it, it's rampant. You know, it, it, it's it's one of the things when you look back in time, it's, it's the old adage of, you know, somebody developed cannons, they built bigger forts, they mm -hmm. developed better guns, they built better body armor. It's always back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. So, and that's exactly what we're dealing with. And quite frankly, the folks that are out there are incredibly smart. So what folks need to do is just make sure that in any electronic communications, you're being as, as careful as you possibly can. Whenever you're wiring money or anything, you want to always first confirm those independently. You don't want to rely on email or text message or anything like that. You want to independently look up our phone number, so don't rely on an email to get the phone number out of it. Go on Google, look us up, give our office a call, and we will confirm those instructions over the phone. Make sure you have what we sent you there in front of you. That conversation will probably take about 60 seconds. It's incredibly okay. easy to do. Um, at the same time, for sellers, I know when we're sending money to them, that's always a scary thing as well because they want to make sure that those aren't getting uh, caught up. We have a program that we use called Certified. Um, so we will ask our sellers to go through that process and verify their instructions that way. It's gonna ask a couple extra questions. It confirms driver's license and all that stuff to make sure that someone is who they say they are and it's actually their bank account that it's going to. The biggest thing is, is by cutting out a lot of the electronic communication there, it removes a lot of the risk. Because between you and me sitting here, there's obviously not a hacker sitting between us. So I can hand you something, you can go to the bank and you've got no problems. Okay. Um, as long as you're diligent in dealing with those situations, there's no real fear that you need to have. You need to respect that there's the fear that's out there and there's potential issues, but as long as you act accordingly and take the necessary steps and think about what you're doing, you won't have any problems. Good. And how can somebody get a hold of you if they needed to speak to a real estate attorney? You can go to www.dgr.law.w. Um, there is a contact us team. Um, so as soon as you uh, go to that, it goes straight to my email and we'll be responding pretty quickly. At the same time, you can always give us a call or any other means that we've got out there. Well, thank you so much, Chad. I appreciate you sitting down with us and going over some basic questions about the closing table. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Crystal Jennings with Century 21 803 Realty. Oh, Bye. Bye. <laughs> Crystal, you're fun to do this with. I'm good.